Uh, happy Tuesday. It is June numbers. It's June number sixth. It's June sixth. This is live stream number twelve. My name is Lars Christensen, and thank you so much for joining in on this live stream. If you're watching this right now, that means you're watching the recording. We haven't gotten actually anybody in the live stream yet. Now today we are going to uh, model up this uh, picture frame. Uh, inside of Fusion 360 and thanks to Brad and Corey for uh, coming up with a suggestion of doing a uh, uh, this picture frame here. Now if you want to uh, send any suggestions in for the live stream, if you go down to the description area of um, the video, you will find my email address and I would absolutely love if you will, uh, if you would send in uh, your suggestions. We can already see we got a couple of people joining in here. Uh, that is awesome. Hey, hello, Fred. And we got Mexico in here too. It's absolutely uh, awesome. Yes. So what we're looking at um, here today is uh, this uh, picture frame. Um, and like I said, it was a guy named Corey and a guy named Brad. And one guy asked, how do you do a uh, picture frame infusion? And the other guy said, how do you kind of like work with reference images? And I thought, you know what? That is a great topic. Um, so not so much about doing a picture frame. Uh, that's not really, I think it's more about the modeling techniques uh, in here. Let me just, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, let me just paste in my email address in the chat here. So if you are in the chat, thank you so much for uh, for jumping in. We got people from Wisconsin, we got people from France, we got people from Sweden. Thank you so much, everybody, for taking the time to jump in on these live streams. And of course, if you're watching the recording, because that's the great thing about YouTube, thank you so much for doing that. And again, my email is down in the description area. Send me uh, any topic that you want. So, like I said, today we're going to do uh, this uh, picture frame, something similar to what you what you see here on the screen. I'm going to model it up from from scratch but like i said i don't really think it's so much about how do you do a picture frame or how do you work with uh to get what i have on the screen here i think it's more about you know the different ways uh, the different uh, model techniques and i will say i think that most people will pick up a couple of tips uh in the way that i'm going to model this at least that's <laughs> that's my attempt you you be the judge right you got the thumbs up or you got the thumbs down if you don't if you don't like the content. So I'm going to be jumping in and I'm going to start modeling this thing up from scratch. Um, and then I will check in with the chat later on. So thank you for all you guys who are in there. Uh, fire off any questions uh, you have in there and definitely make sure that we get to those in the end. But again, thanks to uh, Brad and Corey for sending an email uh, and kind of like, um, you know, be the driver for today's live stream. So let's jump in and uh, start playing with Fusion. Uh, so let me just, well, let's start out by getting out of it. <laughs> Gone with this. Uh, so the first, one of the questions was, how do you work with reference geometry? So really what I did was I went out on Google and I literally just searched um, picture frame, kind of like cross section in here. And I took a, a screenshot of, of one of them. Uh, this one right here. I just literally just snippeted it right out of, of that. And that's what we're going to use for uh, for the profile of this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into to Fusion here. I'm going to start a new sketch. And uh, I'm going to start a new sketch. And it doesn't really matter what plane. I'm just going to select this plane over here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a reference line. Because... You know, what is important to remember, since we're working with a, a pixelated picture, because that's all this was, right? Just snapping a picture out of this. It's all made out of pixels. Uh, so it doesn't have any dimensions. It doesn't have any data in it. It's really just, you know, small colored squares. Uh, so we need to kind of like start coming up with that inside of a fusion. So I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to hit the L key here to get a line tool up, and I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line here, and I'm gonna make it two inches. I'm gonna work in, I'm gonna work in inches here, uh, just for, for this case here. So here we have a pretty boring line, two inches uh, long. Now, if I go up here to insert, you will see that there's two different options up here. There's a decal, 
and there's a Ted's canvas. Um, I'm going to use both of them. Uh, Abraham, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin in the image is actually a decal. So we're going to get to that in a second. But what we're going to use is a Ted's canvas. And that will let us use this pixelated picture as kind of like our, um, you know, our background. So I'm going to go in and click on uh, insert canvas. And the first thing it's looking for is what faces you put it on. So that's going to be this face. And the next button over here is going to say, all right, let's go and get it. So I have that picture right there. So there it comes in. And again, like I said, it comes in at no scale, no value. And that's why I created that two inch line, because that's what we're kind of like going to use to guide it with. Now I get all the different handles so I can start kind of like scaling it up a little bit. I can also grab it and I can start moving it. And I'm going to try to make this corner over here to about there. And then I'm going to pull up and place it somewhere. So I have an intersection right there and that corner hits about the two inches. And that hopefully is not going to take me too long. Let's just try it one more time. It's a little finicky here. Right. So that I'm going to say is is pretty close. Close enough. Again, this is just a guidance. There's no there's no data in a pixelated image like what I just did. You need to go out and grab some higher detailed images if you need to have like uh, that kind of, of data in there. Now, a couple of my options that can be nice in here is I can turn the, opa or the opacity down. That can make it a little bit easier so it's not bright. Turn it down a little bit if you want to. So it's a little bit easier to see. That's kind of like up to you. I'll turn it down to here. I'm going to hit OK. And now we have kind of like placed this image. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sketch uh, around here to kind of like follow that profile, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit L again. And I'm going to create a line up here and a line over, up, over, like that. And then I'm actually, I prefer to use the three point triangle, uh, tr uh, tr three point arc for this. So I'm going to hit the S key. Hopefully you all know about that one. And I have my three point arc right here. And three point arcs are easy. End point, end point, midpoint. And I'm just trying like getting something close, right? I'm going to do, uh, let me continue. Well, let me place one over here. One there, one there, one there. And I guess I might as well just place the other one too. One there, one there, one there. Okay, go back into our line tool. And now I can start connecting the different lines. Okay. So that as soon as I connected that you actually saw it became a little yellow in here. Um, and that tells me that it's all tied together. Let me delete one line. See how it's now all white. And then as soon as I add that last line, then it becomes all yellow. And that means that it's an enclosed circle. Uh, so that's awesome. Now I'm going to turn that can you see the canvas is sitting over here. So I'm going to turn that off for a second. Because now that picture have actually done everything I really need from it. Uh, now I'm going to have to fully define the sketch. And, um, you know, this is one of the things whoops, this is one of the things that I hope that you have kind of like followed along uh, with best practices if you watched any of my videos where right now nothing is tied in. I did a video the other day where I talked about my $500 mistake in a live cast. So you can definitely go out and watch that one. So let's tie this down. So I'm going to go ahead and well, I just moved that one. So let's start fully define this one. So I'm going to make that one vertical. I have the points like that. That one vertical there. And I can see this one. I definitely always want that one to be horizontal. So I'm going to click on that one. Uh, now, the first thing I always look for whenever I'm sketching is tangency. And you will actually see I have the tangency right there. And that's the only one that is tangent. So that's that's all good. But this is one of the first things I would look for. If there's any tangencies, I would apply the tangency constraint. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to start adding some dimensions to uh, this part here. So I'm going to hit D for dimension. And I'm just going to start adding uh, the different dimensions that uh, we're going to need for this part here. So I'm really just going to round these up, get them close. Uh, of course, if you were doing this, uh, you know, you might need to get them a lot closer than what I'm doing here. But again, what I'm really going for here is the fully defined, right? Um, just so so you know that that's what we're aiming for. I'm going to put a radius on here. Let's make that one 0.375. And let's make this one 0.8. 
So really I'm adding all these dimensions that is going to make sure that everything kind of like gets gets locked down. So I'm going to go in here. Let's make this 150. I could make some relationships if I know uh, like I maybe want this line and this line to be equal. So I can use that uh, down there. And whenever you get to a point where you start thinking, OK, why is things still blue? Uh, grabbing a corner is many times uh, the easiest thing to do. So in this case here, I probably also want these two lines to actually uh, be uh, collinear. So I can select this one and this one. And like I said, I just did a live stream on what all these different things did like a few weeks ago. So definitely go through uh, the different ones for that. I probably also want an overall height here. Here's a cool trick. So D for dimension. And if I just select this line, I can select the midpoint uh, and get the center point. But that's not really what I want. What I want is the top here. Well, if you didn't know, if you hold down shift, you can actually snap that tangency point up there. So that can be, that's maybe a trick that you maybe, oh, maybe didn't know about. All right, we got that one in there. Um, what else uh, do we need? Well, like I said, like grabbing corners can can many times uh, give you the answer of what you need to tie down. So I'm just going to work through here. Let's make this one one inch like that. We probably want something with the center or two there, right? That might be, be kind of handy. So from this center point to this here, let's make that one inch. And what else do we got? These have not been defined either. So let's give them a height. 1.15. And now you will see that the whole thing uh, turned black, which means it's fully defined, What means that, like I talked about in my, my last live stream, that if I grab a corner, I am not going to, uh, you know, to screw anything up in here. I'm going to hit Q for uh, extrude. And uh, so as we do that, we can now start pulling out uh, this part of the picture frame here. Um, and you probably would buy like, I don't know, eight feet of it or something like that in the hardware store. Um, I'm just going to make it, uh, I don't know, let's make it 36 inches long or something like that. And all right, so there is kind of like the profile uh, of this here. So I hope that this helped you how you can import in an image and you can use that to trace uh, around with. Now we gotta make some kind of a decision here. I'm thinking that uh, Brad and Corey, now where they're gonna start their own uh, picture framing uh, company here, that they probably gonna buy different kinds of these. So they probably, you know, we could design the whole thing within this part, but I'm thinking that I would probably have different profiles laying. So we're probably kind of like create some kind of a profile library out here. So I'm going to save this one and uh, I'm just going to call it my profile uh, one and just save that one in there. So here we have uh, now our profile. All right, now uh, let's actually go in and create uh, some kind of a picture frame where we are using this piece of stock that we that we just created this profile one. So I'm going to go and create a new design in here. Well, I don't really have to create a new design because we have a new one up here. Um, and I'm going to, this is going to be an assembly, right? There's different kinds of parts in here. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new component. And uh, I talked about, I think it was yesterday about how you should really rename everything. So, you know, just to follow my own kind of thing here. So I'm going to call this the picture, this part here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like draw the picture size. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm just going to do it up here on the top here. And I will use the center rectangle because I'm definitely going to use symmetry for this. You're going to see that I'm going to be lazy when I'm doing this. So I'm going to make a picture frame that is 15 inches by 12 because that was a picture frame that I had in my house. And I'm just going to add a little bit of thickness to this. So Q and I'm just going to add an eighth of an inch to that. So we kind of like have this picture frame. This is the picture frame that Benjamin Franklin uh, SA um, 
as a decal it's going to end up on in a, in a few seconds all right so we have done this here we could of course save it uh, we should give it a name we're just going to call it ban okay and uh, let's now insert uh, this profile in here so I'm going to right click on our profile one and insert into uh, the current design and you know now we see that it's in here I'm going to hit OK and uh, oh, you know what I didn't want it inside of the picture frame I actually wanted it up in band itself so let me just it's because I had this one active you see that it came in there I don't really want it in here so let me go up and make Ben active this is what happens when you do things live so Ben is it Ben is active <laughs> let's go and try that one more time I grab a sip of water okay now when we hit OK, we now have the picture profile and we have uh, the profile length here. Now, um, I actually, so because this picture frame is 15 by 12, I'm going to have two sides that are one length and two sides that are another length. Um, so I actually going to have to, while I'm inside of this assembly, I'm actually going to have to modify uh, these here. So what I'm going to do is because I don't really want to reference back out to profile one anymore because that has the 30, 36 inches long. And, you know, the next picture we're going to make where we're going to put somebody else in, maybe that is, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln or somebody, uh, we will use this piece again. Right. So what I'm going to do. So if I first of all, I can't cut in this piece in here because it's linked in, but I, and I don't want to mess with this piece. This is kind of like done as duty. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to break the link. Now, this piece out here and this piece is not associated anymore. It's uh, they've kind of like been been broken apart because I right clicked and I broke the link. Now, here's another tip that you may or may not know. If you don't know, I'm going to make your day. Now, if I right, if I select the profile here, I want a copy of it because I'm going to make two different lengths. There's going to be one that's going to go along this length here, and then I'm going to mirror that over here. But we also need a second piece that's going to be over here. We can copy it, right? But if I right click here and I say copy, and I right click here and I say paste, I will get a copy of the first one, but they will be length. What means that when I make uh, any changes to this one, it will reflect in the second one. Well, instead of right clicking here and pasting, if I go up and I right click and paste up here, I actually get an option to say paste as new. And paste it, it only comes, so let me just back step. Right click on the profile and say copy. Now, if I, if I right click here and say paste, then it will be a copy that will any effect I'm making in the first profile will take place in the second profile. So they will, they will literally be copies that is linked. But if I go up to the top one and right click and say paste new, then it would actually be a separate, uh, separate copy over here. Okay. I'm just going to hit OK. Now they, they're both in the same laying right on top of each other right now. Uh, that is, that is fine. All right, let's go in and, and move the first one. So I'm going to go and use uh, the joint command. And I'm just going to go up on the view cube and look straight at this here and find out where my points are. So my frame's going to catch right on there on the dollar right there. And then I'm going to move over on our picture itself and find that's midpoint right around there. So there is uh, one of them. It's going to be right there. I'm going to hit OK. And I think that that is the first one up here. So that's going to be the long one. So I'm going to rename that one. Like that. And that means this one here is going to be the short one, right? So I'm going to go in and do the joint again. Now I'm going to right click. Oh, I renamed it. I'm going to go up and sit the joint up here. And let's go in and find that's midpoint. What is up? right there and if you are if this whole joint thing is new to you i did create a video about joints uh, i would definitely recommend that you check that one out uh, that should help you with all this so here's the second one and i'm going to rename this one short frame 
Okay. And then we're literally now just going to saw them to size and then we're just going to mirror them across. Hope that that is uh, that makes sense. Okay, we're about 20 minutes in here. I think this is this is good. This is a good pace here, I hope. All right, to work with these, let's start with the long ones. I'm actually going to hide the short one for a second. Um, and we can see the long one here. So we're going to make a 45 degree kind of miter here. So I'm going to sketch that out. So I'm actually going to flip it over because I want to sketch on the bottom of the frame here. I'm going to right click uh, and create a new sketch. And if it ever turns 90 degrees of what you don't want, then you can just go up here and there's actually the buttons up here. So I'm going to flip it. That's actually how I want to see it. Uh -huh. So that's what I want. Um, now, another thing that might be, be nice to know here is actually I'm creating a sketch inside of the main one, and that's not really what I want. I want to make this cut in the long frame. So this is not what I want. We'll leave that one. What you want to make sure is I make the long frame active when I make this cut, right? Because I only want, I want this cut to take place in this one here. And the reason I noticed that was because I noticed that my picture was not uh, see-through. Um, that was how I realized to see if I have the active unban, everything is, is solid. But as soon as I make the long frame active, then I can see that. All right, this is where I want to open the sketch. I'm going to create a sketch here. I get to turn it around again. Okay, now I'm just going to create a, uh, a line here. And I want that line to be intersecting with the bottom edge here. And I definitely want it to go in 45 degrees. Now, right now it's showing me the length. I'm going to hit the tab key. That will bring me to the angular dimension. And that would be 135, like that. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK right now. And now I have the 35. I also got the length. I actually don't want the length here. I'm going to delete that dimension for a second. Now, what I want is this thing here right now is just moving back and forth. So what I want is I want this line to intersect with the corner of the picture frame here. So I'm going to go in and say I'm going to make a coincident. That line with that corner right there. Okay, so now that is coincident. I also want to make sure that this line here, actually I want that to, to snap into to this horizontal line here. Uh, because that's kind of like where I want this cut to be. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I now want to make a cut here. So I'm actually just going to project these edges over here. So I kind of like can close this one in here. And now if you go and hit Q, we can select all this. And we should be able to cut that whole frame way, away. Now, before I hit OK, notice how my triangle is actually cutting right into the picture itself. You see that little that little notch there? The reason for that is because that uh, the picture, that file is still um, is still visible. So that cut will take effect into anything that's visible. If I turn off the picture frame, now that cut will not it cannot cut anything it can't see. So this is actually what we want. So just make sure you see that. So that's just one of those things to be aware of. It makes totally sense that the software does this, but you need to keep an eye out for that. So let me hide that and hit OK. And now we got the first, now I can turn it back on again. Now we kind of like got the first cut here. Now, I could sketch out on the other side, but I am lazy, as some of you guys know. I'm going to turn my origin on. That's going to make it appear right in the center of where the picture frame was and then I can use that so I'm gonna go to create I'm gonna go to mirror and you have different options in here in the mirror option one of them is features so I can actually go right down in the tree and I can hit that cut that we just had and then I can say I want to mirror that over this face right here and if I hit OK you will now see that we just cut that to length. That's actually the long frame uh, all done. So that's what we wanted there. Now, if I turn on the short frame, you will see that that is sitting right there. So now I'm going to go in and do the exact same thing as I just did to, to the long frame. I'm going to go in and do to the short frame. So I'm going to right click and create a sketch on top of that. 
like that there. And I'm going to hit alpha line. And I'm just going to make sure I grab that bottom edge. Let's get the line up in some kind of an angle. Again, 35 degrees. I'm really just doing what you just saw me do before. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I make this line coincident with that inner section right there. Make sure that this point is in the center of that. And then I just projected uh, the faces or the lines here from the edge. And that will let me hit Q and cut these off right here. Again, because I have the picture available, it makes the notch. If I turn the picture off before I hit OK, it will not happen. So I can turn the picture frame back on. Right? And if I turn the long frame on, we sh well, let me turn it off to ban. We should have a nice. What do you call that? A miter edge? I'm not sure what you call that. 45 degree putting together there. We still have to mirror that in the short frame. So let's go back to the short frame. And I'm just going to hide the long frame. It is a mirror option. Again, I really like this feature. If you just created a feature and you can select that feature down the tree, and then my mirror plane is this plane here. And that brings the cut there. And now if I turn the everything back on, we have the long and the short frame. And now I'm just really going to mirror those over as components. So I'm going to go back into the mirror that you saw me do before. But before I, I use features, now I'm going to go around and say I'm going to get components. So I'm going to mirror this component here over that plane. OK. Right click again. Repeat the mirror. This time it's still in components. This time it's like this one. And I'm going to mirror it over this plane uh, right here. Now, a funny thing happens. Look, it actually brings in the reference profile for those mirrors. We can just go and turn those canvases off. Interesting. No problem. OK, and I'm going to turn my joints off too. And my origin. So there is um, there is the picture frame, friends. So that's pretty good. Now the last thing I did uh, in here was I then took and said I wanted to create a instead of creating an attached canvas like we used to draw the profile up, I'm gonna this time select the decal and uh, the face I wanted on is gonna be this face, and I selected to go out and find uh, Benjamin Franklin. Um, you know, I wasn't sure who to put who to put in here. My boss, maybe. Um, but um, if you have Benjamin Franklin is a great guy. If you ever want to read a good book, read his autobiography. It's really funny and have a lot of great stuff in it here. So here I can actually place this decal. Um, and actually, let me just turn the frames off for a second because something that is interesting about uh, decals is that if I just move it over here and, and scale it out a little bit, you see how the edges, maybe it's hard if I move my mouse, my mouse over it, the edges looks like that they are kind of like changing, they're not solid, even though that I'm kind of like scaling it up like this. And that's because a decal will actually try to wrap itself. So it's actually wrapping around the backside on here. So this is how you can put a decal on a, um, Unlike a curved face, and it will still look okay because it actually wraps it around if it was a dome or, or, or something, something like that. Let's turn the flame frames back on here and get Franklin on here. Like that. And this time I'm gonna stop messing around and just get it up there so it looks somewhat decent. There you go, Ben, and hit OK, and then uh, you got Benjamin Franklin here. Now, what I did in the other image was I actually also added some appearances. So right click, and you can hit Appearances, and you will see that there's all kinds of appearances in here, um, and you will see that some of them have an arrow next to them over here, and that means you can download them. I downloaded a mahogany glass, and all you do is you just drag them on here. That's really all you have to do like this 
like that and uh, and then you have uh, that picture there and of course if you wanted to you could now go out and you could go in the render space and and make it make it look real all right guys i hope that that was uh, i hope that was somewhat helpful um that was about 30 minutes uh this is actually i think the first time on the live stream where i just went right in and started uh using fusion modeling things up i hope that this kind of like is helpful um because i thought it was a great suggestion by by brad and, and corey for that so i appreciate that again if you have anything you would like to see in the live stream uh, go down the description area. If you're watching the recording, you'll find my email. Shoot me an email. If you are in the chat right now, uh, then uh, yeah, my email address is also in there. Let me just check. We got 76 people in here, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, so uh, let me just see here if there's any questions that I can address. India is in here. That is awesome. Denmark. Hello, Ronnie. Um, we got Florida. You guys are awesome. Romania. Um, oh, Neil got his space mouse today. Uh, so um, some people have asked me about this. I don't know if I can. It's connected, but uh, 3D connection device. I'm still hoping to make a video very soon on uh, these devices because I think that that is uh, value. That is how I spin my my models around now. Some people don't like these devices. Uh, my good friend John Saunders from NYCNC, he will tell you not to buy one. So I want to do a review where I show you some of the different models that I have used and, and stuff like that. But, you know, Neil, I hope that you really, I hope you will love it. Um, all right. Uh, would sweeps work? Yes, sweep could also absolutely have been, have been used here. That would have been been another option. If I wanted to make the, the picture frame like oval or something, I would have definitely probably gone to a uh, a sweep. Um, right, so it wouldn't give you the miter cut. That's true, uh, if that's what you call it. Um, is that a body or a part you're working on? Well, so it is. I turned it into components uh, because I just think that that's a little bit easier. You could have done it all and you could have done things in in bodies uh too but in my mind it was kind of like a little bit like an assembly right like i what i one of the things that i like to try to do that helps me is to think about when I, whenever you got to model something up one of the, the the cheats i think um is to think about how you would do it in real life so if i was going to make uh this picture in real life um i would grab the different pieces of wood right and i would cut it to the links and i would grab it like that so if you're thinking of it as components i find that helpful um all right and yes you're absolutely uh you're absolutely right i just missed who with that who said that um that infusion there's a million different ways to do this this the, this is not necessarily the best way to do it uh that's not but this is how i kind of like just thought i would attack it uh, what is the difference between push, pull, and extrude? Um, well, they're kind of the same thing. Um, extrude, actually, I think extrude was in the software before push, pull. And if you're using any other CAD software, extrude will always be in there. But push, pull will actually let you do a couple of other things. Push, pull will let you add fillets. So if you are in the push, pull, push, I'm sorry, folks, it's a hard language. I'm just trying to use it. Uh, if you are in the push pull, press push pull, push push pull, I never mind, you know what I'm saying. Then you can click on ads and you can fill it. it. Uh, this would definitely have been cut out if this was a video. Um, and if you can also, um, if you have extruded something out in a certain length, you hit the push pull, you click on a face, you can actually make it longer without even creating a sketch. Maybe this is another thing for uh, for another live stream. All right, guys. There's a lot of great uh, stuff in here. Um, really appreciate it. I think I'm going to stop uh, the streaming here and do what I normally do, get into the chat and uh, and chat with you guys if you want to if you want to hang around. So again, if you're watching the recording, down in the description, there is a uh, a link to my email. Go and send me an email if there's anything you would like to see in these live streams. And uh, if you're in the live stream right now, 
you will see it in the chat up at the top is my email also, also in there. So again, Brad and Corey, really appreciate that you sent me the emails and uh, gave me the suggestions for what I showed today. And for all you guys, um, I will be in the chat, but for all you guys watching the recordings, until the next time, have an awesome day.